Hello friends, welcome back to the video lecture series of control system. Today we will start with transfer function. First look at the block diagram. Plant function has one input that is u of t and one output that is y of t. Here y of t is nothing but input convolute with plant function. Here convolution is one operation. Like in number system, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, these are simple operations. In same manner, in signal system, along with these operations, convolution is one more operation. Definition of transfer function is the ratio of Laplace transform of the output to the Laplace transform of the input considering all initial conditions to zero. So here as per the definition Laplace transform of input is capital U of S and Laplace transform of output is capital Y of S. So after understanding the definition we can easily say transfer function g of s is equal to y of s upon u of s means ratio of Laplace transform of output to the ratio, uh, Laplace transform of input. So here why Laplace transform is very important question. So for that just look at this block diagram here as we know that y of t is u of t convolute with plant function. So for transfer function we required ratio of output upon input. So here we want u of t in the left hand side. But we don't know this complex operation called convolution so it's very difficult to take u of t on left hand side so for that simplification we are using one property in a laplace transform that is convolution in time domain is nothing but simple multiplication in laplace domain so we can represent this equation as y of s is equal to u of s into plant function of s. So using Laplace transform we easily convert convolution into multiplication. So there are some more advantages. By use of Laplace transform we can convert many common functions into algebraic functions of complex variable s. For example, we can convert sinusoidal function or exponential function in simple algebraic functions of s. So Laplace of sin omega t is omega upon a square plus omega square or Laplace transform of e raised to minus a t is 1 upon s plus a. So here s is a complex variable, s is rho plus j omega, rho is a real part and omega is complex part. Same way, not only these common functions like uh, sinusoidal functions and exponential, we can convert calculus operations also in algebraic expressions. For example, derivative integration we can convert these operations into algebraic expressions of s so for example single derivative of uh, x of t we can convert into laplace as s into x of s minus x of 0 and double derivative of x of t in the laplace domain we can write as a s square into capital x of s minus x of 0 minus derivative of x of 0. Same way for integration. Integration of x of t we can write 
in the Laplace domain as a 1 by s x of s. By looking at these two formulas, we can easily say the time domain derivative becomes multiplication by s and time domain integral becomes division by s in frequency domain. Uh, now we will see some calculation of transfer function. So consider one ODE that is ordinary differential equation is given where y of t is an input and x of t is the output of the system. So we are interested output upon input ratio for finding the Laplace transform. So first of all this is given differential equation we can si uh, simply represent this equation in dot form so we are using dot for derivative this is double derivative so two dots this is single derivative so single dot so we just apply our double derivative or a single derivative formulae on this equation so we get this expression along with initial conditions if we assume initial conditions to zero then these are neglected so x of zero x dash of zero y of zero these becomes zero so after assuming initial condition zero we get a s square x of s is equal to c s y of s minus b s x of s so here x of s is common so we get a square plus b s and uh, y of s is multiplied by c into s so here we are interested in output upon input so in this case output is x of s and input is y of s so output upon input is c upon s plus v so this is our transfer function for given ordinary differential equation. In same manner electrical systems also can we can find transfer function of electrical systems. Uh, we know we can easily represent electrical uh, networks in a differential equations and as we studied now we can easily convert differential equation into transfer function so this is also one method the system given uh, power supply that is input u of s uh, one ohm resistor and one farad capacitor so we assume voltage across capacitor is y so initially capacitor is not charged so y of 0 is 0 so if we apply uh, current across capacitor property current across capacitor is what c dv by dt so c dv v means voltage across capacitor so it is nothing but y of t by dt so c dv by dt c is the value is 1 farad and d by dt of y of t is nothing but y dash of t so we can easily say if apply kvl in this loop we get u of t is equal to y dash of t plus y of t because current across this 1 ohm is y dash of t into 1 ohm is y dash of t so voltage across 1 ohm is y dash of t and voltage across capacitor is y of t so we easily get this KVL equation u of t is equal to y dash of t plus y of t so if we apply Laplace transform to this equation u of t get converted into u of s y dash of t is s into y of s because initial condition is 0 plus y of s so y of s is the output so y of s upon u of s is nothing but 1 upon s plus 1 so this is the transfer function for given electrical R network so in general a0 n derivative of y plus a1 
n minus 1 derivative of y plus n of y is equal to b0 m derivative of x plus b1 m minus 1 derivative of x plus up to the bm of x. If this is a differential equation is given and n is greater than or equal to m, this is the condition, where x is the input and y is the output of the system. So, transfer function for given generalized equation is g of s is equal to Laplace transform of output upon Laplace transform of input and initial conditions are zero. So, we get y of s upon x of s is b0 s raised to m plus b1 s raised to m minus 1 plus dot 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 up to b of m upon a0 s raised to n plus a1 s raised to n minus 1 plus dot 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 up to a raised to n. So here when order of the denominator polynomial means if n is greater than m then it is called proper transfer function otherwise n is less than m then we call improper transfer function so what is the use of transfer function transfer function helps us to check the stability of system means whatever be the circuit is given we convert into transfer function system and then we can easily analyze regarding stability of that network or of that system time domain and frequency domain characteristic of the system then response of a system for any given input means how it responds to particular standard input or any input we can analyze those results using transfer function next important part is stability of control system there are several meanings of stability in general there are two kinds of stability absolute stability and second is relative stability here generalized transfer function equation is given y of, y of s upon x of s where n is greater than m so roots of denominator polynomial we called as a poles of that system means uh, whatever be the roots of denominator we called as a poles and roots of numerator we called as a zeros so these poles and zeros we require to understand the stability of that system so normally poles of the system are represented by cross symbol and zeros of the system are represented by O or zero system order is always equal to the number of poles of the transfer function so this is simple rule what is the order of your system if someone asks so we need to calculate number of poles so that is our order of system so following transfer function represent nth order because s raised to n term is present so total n poles are there in this system poles is also defined as it is the frequency at which system becomes infinite hence the name pole where field is infinite means at the pole value if we substitute s is equal to pole value then transfer function becomes it gives infinite response whereas zero is the frequency at which system becomes zero because if we substitute s is equal to zero's value then we get response as a zero 
system re uh, response becomes zero. Stability of control system. Pole is also defined as it is the frequency at which system becomes infinite like magnetic pole or black hole. So this is simple example of pole. But this is these are some examples where actually we covered in academic uh, syllabus. Consider the transfer function calculated in previous slide is C upon S plus B. The denominator polynomial is S plus B. So roots of this uh, denominator is minus B upon A. Consider the following transfer functions and determine whether the transfer function is proper or improper. Second is poles of the system. Third is zeros of the system. And fourth is what is the order of the system. So this is for homework. This, these are very simple. By looking at the transfer function we can say for example g of s is equal to s plus 3 upon s into s plus 2. So here it is a proper function because denominator order is higher than numerator. Then the poles are s is equal to 0 and s is equal to minus 2. So two poles. Zeros s is equal to minus 3 means 1 0. Order of system is nothing but number of poles. So order is second order. So in this manner we have to analyze all these four example. So this is for homework. Next is stability of control system by the location of poles and zeros. The poles and zeros of the systems are plotted in a S plane. So S plane is nothing but rho versus j omega axis. So S is nothing but rho plus j omega where rho is a real part so that is on the x axis and j omega axis means omega is a imaginary part so it is on y axis. If these are some conditions, if all the poles of the system lie in the left hand side, left hand side means this region. So if poles are lies on left hand side of S plane then system is said to be stable. If any pole lie on the right half of the S plane then it is uh, unstable. Any single pole if lie on the right hand side then it is uh, unstable. Means if there are total four poles in one system and three poles lies in the left hand side and one pole is right lies on the right hand side still that whole function is unstable. If the poles lies on imaginary axis then system is said to be marginally stable. For example transfer function g of s is equal to c upon s plus b where pole is minus b by a. So here a b c values are given a is equal to 1 b is equal to 3 and c is equal to 10 so pole value is minus b upon a so minus b means minus 3 upon 1 is minus 3 so it lies on left hand side so system is stable this is once again for homework consider the following transfer function determine same as previous question whether function is proper or improper poles and zeros then order of system and along with this we have to draw the pole zero map and determine stability of system by the position of poles and zeros. So here for example s plus 3 upon s into s plus 2 pole zeros poles are s is equal to 0 and minus 2 
so both are lie on left hand side s is equal to plus uh, minus 3 means 0 is minus 3 left hand side so this is a stable so same way you have to solve for all the example next is another definition of stability normally we called bi bo stability bounded input bounded output stability the system is said to be stable if for any bounded input the output of system is also bounded thus the for any bounded input the output either remains constant or decrease with time so it should not increase with time otherwise at t is equal to infinity we get infinite output so look at this diagram plant input is unit step function and we get output something decreasing so this is what BIBO stable function this is uh, overshoot and this response get drop down at t equal to infinity it becomes zero another example for the any bounded input output is not bounded then system is unstable same plant input is a unit step but response is exponential e raised to a t if it is e raised to minus a t then response is something different so e raised to my e raised to a t if t is equal to infinite we get e raised to infinite response that is nothing but infinity so it is an unbounded response now bi bo versus transfer function for example y of s is uh, sorry transfer function g1 of s is 1 upon s plus 3 and g2 of s is 1 upon s minus 3 so in the left hand side pole is lies on left hand side and right hand side function pole is li er, lies on right hand side so just by position of poles and zeros we can easily predict g1 of s is a stable function whereas g2 of s is an unstable function if we take Laplace inverse for these two function we can easily get 1 upon s plus 3 is nothing but e raised to minus 3 t u of t whereas 1 upon s minus 3 is e raised to 3 t u of t so this is a stable function because as t tends to infinity this y of t becomes 0 whereas in this second uh, equation e raised to 3 t u of t as t tends to infinity y of t becomes infinite so this is a uh, unstable because unbounded output and whereas this is a bounded output so if we plot these two functions we come to know it starts from 1 and then it drops down to 0 whereas as time increases it reaches to infinity whenever one or more than one poles are in the right hand side the solution of dynamic equation contains increasing exponential term such as e raised to 3t or e raised to positive a t that makes the response of the system unbounded and hence overall response of the system is unstable so this is the main reason though there are five or six poles on the left hand side and single pole is on the right hand side still system get unbounded response and it becomes unstable so thank you for watching this lecture in the next lecture we will start with lecture 3 that is an introduction to mechanical modeling